By 1996, toy manufacturer Playmates Toys had released over 183 four and a half inch action figures from every iteration of Star Trek in existence at the time. While broadly well received by both casual fans and collectors, Playmates had charted a tumultuous course over the preceding years. Firstly, a last minute change in costumes used for the Star Trek film Generations resulted in an entire wave of figures looking inaccurate to those seen on screen. Then, a change in scale, along with the absence of a Borg Queen figure for the movie First Contact, further irritated fans. Finally, a well-intentioned tribute to Star Trek's 30th anniversary was the catalyst to collector anger, with the release of three figures so limited they were near impossible to find. Continuing their tradition of producing characters who appeared in recent episodes of the then concurrent Deep Space Nine and Voyager, Playmates expanded their basic assortment into 1997. From the Bajoran sector, Worf's disgraced brother Kern appeared along with a striking new version of Benjamin Sisko. Now a fully fledged captain, this updated figure depicted him with a distinctive shaved head and beard which he wore in the later seasons of the show. From the Delta Quadrant, an updated version of the duplicitous Seska, alongside a mutated Tom Paris, who effectively demonstrated the dangers of travelling at Warp 10 in the episode Threshold. Among the best-loved figures of the entire line were the Gorn, along with the Mugato, both of whom were created by Scott Hensey, a freelance artist already responsible for an impressive roster of figures Scott lovingly and effectively captured every detail of these iconic 60s aliens. Originally advertised as being part of the fourth Next Generation series, Beverly Crusher from Star Trek Generations materialised as yet another limited edition figure, with 10,000 units produced. Despite her rarity, this figure is another oddity in the line with the character never having worn the uniform in Generations, nor in any other on-screen appearance. The seventh and final wave of this assortment focused heavily on the original series, with intergalactic conman Harry Mudd making an appearance, along with Captain Kirk in the environmental suit he wore in the Tholian web. Looking somewhat distinguished, or like a skunk, with a distinctive grey streak, Professor Data added to the growing subset of figures from the episode All Good Things. These figures would be packaged with the final set of trading cards produced for Playmates by Skybox. By this point, collectors had grown fatigued with the constant release of limited edition figures. This sentiment was not aided by a new version of Dr. McCoy in his dress uniform, limited to 10,000 pieces. Just as radical changes were afoot within the Star Trek universe itself, so too were they at Playmates. Product manager Chris Overly publicly admitted to dwindling sales and overwhelmingly negative fan reaction to both the chase figures and the collector-based marketing strategy. Alongside a complete aesthetic makeover for the entire line came a promise from Playmates there would be no more limited edition figures, period. In a self-admitted last-ditch effort to drive sales to the line, the Warp Factor series featured radically redesigned packaging and artwork, whilst the figures themselves were produced in much lower quantities, maxing out at approximately 35,000. Wave 1 featured a notable first, whereby almost the entire set was devoted to a single episode. Celebrating trials and tribulations, these figures included almost the entire crew of the Defiant as they appeared in the previous year's anniversary episode, whilst accompanying them was Koloth, the seminal Klingon captain from the original 60s episode. 
Having reintroduced Tribbles to the franchise, the new figures were duly accessorised with the popular creatures. Some packs even featured randomly inserted furry versions of Tribbles as a bonus, though definitely not in the Klingon set. Collector excitement over this wave was soon tempered by the reveal of another limited edition figure, Chief Miles O'Brien. Of the 10,000 figures produced, only half the amount made it to retail stores, with the rest being given away for promotional purposes and as part of the Triple Tribbles competition. Some of the figures released in Wave 2 began to fulfil the initial promise of the Warp Factor series. In their quest to reinvigorate the line, Playmate staff were committed to producing the most beautiful and hyper-realistic figures, which often meant sacrificing articulation to preserve a superlative sculpt. This new design ethos became evident in the female figures released for the wave. Captain Beverly Picard completed the All Good Things subset, while the Ilea probe complemented the crew already released from the motion picture. In addition, episode-specific figures also appeared in the form of Captain Sisko in Klingon disguise from the episode Apocalypse Rising, as well as the titular alien from Voyagers, The Swarm. Of special note was Lita the Darbo Girl, one of the key players from Deep Space Nine's supporting cast, this figure owes its existence to Chase Masterson's fan club. By sending emails and physical letters to Playmates, the actress's fans successfully campaigned for her figure to be created, which was a great achievement. Rounding out the year was the third Warp Factor Wave. Of the five figures released, Three harken back to the previous year's Starfleet Academy line, as Data, Deanna Troy and Beverly Howard Crusher were presented as cadets, while the two remaining figures were both drawn from memorable original series episodes. In this instance, doomed social worker Edith Keeler from City on the Edge of Forever and Commander Spock from Mirror Mirror. Spock in particular, with his sinister goatee, bears an impressive resemblance to Leonard Nimoy as he appeared on screen. By 1998, it was clear Playmates were shifting its focus away from the four and a half inch figure line, which had been central to their success. With a growing emphasis on larger scaled figures, fewer characters were released. When the ninth Star Trek film, Insurrection, was released that year, Playmates opted to release 9 and 12 inch dolls instead of the typical action figures they'd released for the previous two films. To quell the still persistent frustration over the 1701 figure scandal, Playmates took the unprecedented move of reissuing all three figures in a box set together. While these new versions came unnumbered, the set at least gave fans the opportunity to fill gaps in their collection. While not part of any formalised wave, a number of new box sets provided collectors with a source of new characters. Comparable to this cinema scenes from the Star Wars line, Playmates packaged both new and old figures together along with a base and cardboard background. By recreating iconic scenes from the various Star Trek series, these sets provided collectors with some intriguing additions. By far the most intricate character ever produced was that of Species 8472, a three-legged alien powerful enough to threaten the Borg Collective. For the first time, sculpting of this figure was outsourced to a well-respected design studio, Art Asylum. The Warp Factor series continued with a fourth wave which included a new reimagined design aesthetic represented by Keiko O'Brien, Kang and Intendant Kira from the Mirror Universe. In addition, despite collector criticism for her pre-post stance, Kira was this wave's chase figure with only 8,000 produced. Packaged with an in-scale ultrasonic neuralizer, 
The Andorian figure was based on the alien's appearance in the episode Whom Gods Destroy. His bright pink clothing makes him an unusual addition to the line, being the only time fabric was used to accessorise a figure. Reusing the moulds from existing figures, Playmates unveiled its innovative Transporter series. The Transporter effect was achieved by a partially translucent figure atop a lighted base. Pressing a button would trigger the Transporter sound effect and simulate the beaming action. These charming figures were very popular with collectors, with both the original series and Next Generation crews represented. In the case of the latter, the characters appeared in inaccurate uniforms, with the shoulder and torso colours reversed. This significant error was missed by Playmates as the figures went into production. The last set of Warp Factor figures arrived in September of 1998 and consisted of only four characters. Both Kirk and Spock appeared in their civilian attire from the episode City on the Edge of Forever and were no doubt released to complement the already available Edith Keeler. Freed from the Borg Collective, Seven of Nine, the newest addition to the crew of the USS Voyager, made her appearance still partially assimilated. Without a doubt, the highlight of this final wave was the Borg Queen. Sculpted by Steve Varner and long requested by fans, this figure is still regarded as one of Playmate's finest offerings. By 1999, the once steady stream of figures from Playmates had become a trickle. Offered exclusively through US retailer Target, this latest set of figures comprised the next generation crew in their new movie uniforms. Manufactured by modifying existing parts, these figures were made in vastly smaller quantities, with a run of only 10,000 each. For markets outside the US, a small sticker labelling the figures as International Editions was added. Released alongside the Enterprise crew was an updated Seven of Nine, now fully human and sporting her ubiquitous silver catsuit. The final two figures in this series weren't even released in the United States, instead becoming exclusives for the UK and Australia. Dr Beverly Crusher, in her Insurrection uniform, and a newer version of Seven of Nine, marked the end of the line for both Playmates and an era. Barring a few remaining exclusive and mail-away figures, the once popular and thriving Star Trek Playmates line of action figures from the 1990s simply stopped without any ceremony or fanfare. Reasons for its cancellation included the furor around the 1701 figures, along with Star Trek itself losing critical appeal at the end of the 20th century. Moreover, the action figure landscape itself was also changing with new players like McFarlane Toys offering collectors never-before-seen levels of realism. With a wide-ranging line of figures numbering in the hundreds, as well as characters in different scales, Playmates most certainly left an indelible mark on Star Trek fans and collectors. Not only had they produced figures, but also ships, playsets, phasers, tricorders, and communicators. Even to this day, customizers, talented and enterprising artists in their own right, continue to create special variant figures and never seen before characters to fill their own collections, whilst injecting the same love and attention to detail as the original creators. For new collectors, the line is particularly appealing not only for its breadth and depth, but for its ease of access. Owing to the large production runs of most characters, these figures are still relatively affordable more than 20 years after the line's cancellation. But for those who grew up with these toys, the adult collectors who once cherished these figures as children, they mean so much more. They represent a special moment in time, connected by the nostalgia of fandom, 
retail shopping and the sheer joy of adding a new figure to the collection. But most of all, they remind us of the love we have for Star Trek that continues to unite fans worldwide. <laughs>